Uh, hello, my name is Matthew, and I read The Final Problem by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, and this is the end of my reading series, uh, the end of um, my experiment, my book club with Steve Donahue of reading all the Sherlock Holmes short stories in the month of March, uh, The Final Problem. This is the story where Sherlock Holmes dies at the end, so surely there's no more short stories after this. Uh, Sherlock is dead. It's the end of a great uh, short story series by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Um, good job, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, but Sherlock is dead. No more short stories. No more Sherlock. <laughs> uh, so the, the final problem has a lot of problems. Uh, so it is going to be the demise of Sherlock Holmes, the intention of uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle to bring a conclusion uh, to this great character. And it is with the introduction of Pro Professor Moriarty, who um, is an intriguing character. It's um, the idea of the, the kingpin, the overarching criminal villain hiding in the shadows at the center of the spider web, um, does not have, doesn't move, but just pulls on spider webs, pulls on threads, and the whole criminal underworld uh, revolves around this great criminal mind. And uh, Sherlock is um, in a frenzy talking to Watson and even um, gives Professor Moriarty uh, an incredible amount of credit to say that he is uh, Sherlock's intellectual equal. And so we're to believe um, this is a man that has his fingers, his tendrils, in every aspect of um, London or England's criminal underground and so many of the cases that Sherlock has been involved in there's been these uh, shadows and dark corners and small unexplained details that um, Sherlock has been able to uh, piece by piece Put together this uh, surrounding puzzle that there must be one mastermind at the center of it and very slowly very secretly he's been working his way up um, the, to the top of this pyramid to the center of the spider web and slowly unraveling the mystery of uh, professor moriarty and uh, the story begins at a moment that um, Sherlock has gained Moriarty's attention, Moriarty has gained uh, Sherlock's uh, attention, and they they had one singular conversation. The story itself is a runaway sequence. It's an, it's an uh, escape sequence. Um, it's very fast paced and adventurous instead of reading very quickly like a really great romp it actually reads hastily as if the author really is sick of <laughs> this uh, thread of a story a thread of this character and just does want to kill him off wants to um, uh, for a certain stop any certainty of having to write these short stories and in hindsight knowing the backstory um, it becomes a much less pleasurable of a read for for a few reasons one Sherlock obviously comes back Moriarty is so, has been so 
um, over-exaggerated and so aggrandized and uh, developed into this character um, in television and in movies uh, as if he's played a part in every single Sherlock Holmes short story and has been the mastermind of every crime, every burglary, every uh, bank robbery, every forgery, every murder, and it's clearly not the case. This is um, a, a new character um, added on um, very much in a way that it, it feels tacked, it feels tacked on, um, not a super villain that has earned the reputation through time. And I think about uh, re recently reading um, Daredevil uh, with, with the Kingpin in Marvel Comics. And um, in, the, in the Daredevil run that I read, it was a series of uh, a collection of comic books, the graphic novel known as Daredevil Born Again, we have a kingpin character who is a criminal mastermind um, of the liking of a Moriarty type figure. And the kingpin's uh, reputation in that graphic novel series is earned because it's a long running character that has threaded through Marvel comics. He was a, a principal villain uh, for, for Spider-Man. I also think about the Marvel movies with um, the Marvel Cinematic Universe that had a 10-year run with um, Thanos being this mastermind ultimate um, villain that's behind, behind the scenes slowly p piecing things together and being the ultimate cause of a lot of trouble but not being present it, it, it's such a great example of a, a slow build-up um, where the catharsis when, when we finally have a confrontation Thanos uh, finally emerges and the, the Avengers, Iron Man, Thor, Captain America, all have to come together in a two-part conclusion. It feels satisfying. This story does not feel uh, earned. Um, it doesn't feel satisfying. And most importantly, it doesn't feel emotional. It begins with, begins with uh, the final problem. It is with a heavy heart that I take up my pen to write these, uh, the last words in which I shall ever record the singular gifts by which my friend Sherlock Holmes was distinguished. And it still, it still reads, <sighs> there's an affection but it's 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 not. Um, it doesn't equate to all of the stories that we've read, where Watson is clearly um, affectionate towards his friend Sherlock Holmes. It wouldn't begin with. Uh, it begins with a heavy heart that I'm now going to tell you a story, and there was Professor Moriarty, and I want to tell you how my friend died there would be such an emotional weight behind it that wasn't earned and isn't there. Uh, and the detective work, the, the examples of brilliance and genius um, is also rather cheap. Uh, there's a moment where Sherlock and Moriarty, Professor Moriarty, meet and it's supposed to be um, tense and deadly uh, Mor Moriarty uh, Sherlock knows that Professor Moriarty 
knows about him, and so Moriarty's the uh, super villain, and Sherlock's the one hot on his trail, and so it's alarming that Moriarty walks in to um, confront Sherlock, and Sherlock has a gun on him, Moriarty knows that he has a gun on him, Sherlock says, uh, what do you have to say, and Moriarty says, well, you already know what I would have to say, Sherlock says, well, then you know what the response would be. And they, they go back and forth with basic, basically saying, I know what you're thinking, and you know what I'm thinking, and you know what I think that you're thinking, and then they part. Compared to um, the lively and entertaining exchange between two other intellectual giants in this fictional world. Um, we had a great interaction between Sherlock and Mycroft, where it's specific. We, we get specific examples. Um, instead of cheap, um, gen general literary conversational tricks of well, I know what you know, and so you know what I know. Anything like that. Now, it ends with Sherlock uh, dying. We, we have uh, sort of a escapade where uh, Sherlock and Watson are on the they're fleeing, they're leaving England, they're going to the continent, they're in France, and then Luxembourg, and then another Euro uh, European country, and uh, wherever they're going, M Mori already knows exactly where they're going um, until there's a confrontation, and um, Watson witnesses it, and it really does end feeling st sterile and um, not believable. And apparently the, the, the reaction to this when the short story came out was outrage because people love this series, they love the characters, Sherlock and Watson. Um, and I would almost imagine that the the, the outrage and disappointment that would come from a short story like this isn't necessarily that Sherlock dies at the end. It's just, it's just that it's done so um, hastily and cheaply uh, and it feels so unsatisfying. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's really not one of my favorite short stories. There's very little detective work. Um, we get Moriarty, who is a great character, totally overblown as far as adaptations. Would be interesting to have lots of adventures with them going back and forth um, as if it was planned. Uh, a ten short story series where it builds up and you are getting clues, and Moriarty finally appears. But to have a relatively short, short story, um, have all of this happen all at once, and now Sherlock is dead, um, just does does not work. It, 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 it holds a place, um, but... As a short story on its own, it really is one of the weakest uh, that I've read so far. Uh, Mycroft makes uh, the, the, the briefest, uh, just slipperiest little appearances, so I, I guess I'm happy about that. Um, and it's, it's just so unbelievable. If, if Watson really believed that his friend was dead, uh, the way that this would be written would be totally different. Uh, Watson would be an emotional wreck, and I, I don't know how it would play out, but it, it wouldn't be, well, my friend died during the tale of the week, and so now I'm going to, t I'm going to tell you the tale of the week. Um, 
So it's, it's disingenuous um, in that respect, and it's unsatisfying. It's not a good story. Uh, Moriarty, Moriarty's a good character, but not that great of a character. Not earned. It's not an earned character. Um, those are my thoughts on the final problem. Um, the last short story of <laughs> uh, Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. <laughs> uh, so this is the end of our reading run. Or maybe I'll be back for another 20 <laughs> videos. There's Andy. Uh, thank you for watching. Please leave a comment if you would like him. Hey, Andy. Okay, thank you for watching. Leave a comment if you'd like, and take care. What are you doing? Hey, Andy. <laughs> okay, take care. Thank you. I just wanted to show off Andy a little bit. Uh, thank you for watching.